Hi, I'm Pamela Salzman. I have a great recipe for you today. We're going to be making a chocolate cake that is gluten-free, grain-free, potentially dairy-free, and the secret ingredient is zucchini, but you won't even know it. So let's get started. I have an eight by eight square baking dish and I'm gonna grease this up before we even start with our batter. I'm gonna use some coconut oil today. And you just wanna make sure that you get all of the sides and the bottom well greased up. I would recommend taking a piece of parchment paper and lining the cake pan with that. So you can just put this piece in it's about so big with about an inch overhanging on two sides. And that way you can actually remove the cake very easily and then transfer it to another platter. Okay, so our cake pan is prepped and now we'll start adding all of the ingredients into our mixing bowl. The base of this cake is nut butter. So I have here a homemade almond butter. You can find this recipe on my website on PamelaSalzman.com. It's super easy to make. So place your almond butter into the bowl and then you're going to add the sweetener which is a third of a cup of grade A maple syrup. I'm using grade A maple syrup just because I don't really want the maple flavor to come out in this cake. Um, a grade B would be a little bit of a stronger maple flavor. So grade A is just an earlier press in the season. That's all it is. It doesn't mean it's higher quality. It doesn't mean that it's better for you. It just means it has a lighter flavor. So I tend to use grade A a lot when I'm baking. Um, but please try and look for a good quality organic maple syrup. Mrs. Butterworth's and you know Log Cabin is just not going to cut it for this. Okay, then we're going to use some cocoa powder and this is just a good quality organic cocoa powder. You want something that's unsweetened though. We're going to add in some baking soda and some salt. Okay, and then we are also going to be adding in some coffee powder if you have it, if you want to use it. Um, I sometimes use, because I'm a little sensitive to caffeine, so if I want to make like an ice blended mocha, I might use something like this, which is not really coffee. This is called Pero, and it's an instant coffee, but it is grain based, so it's also not gluten free. It, the base of this is um, barley and chicory and rye. Barley and rye both have gluten. So if you have something like this, great use it. I love using coffee whenever I do chocolate desserts because I just think that the coffee brings out the chocolatiness. You know, it really enhances the chocolate flavor. You don't have to do it. Any kind of an instant coffee would work. If your husband is like mine and he's obsessed with everything from the 60s and 70s, you might have some Senka in the house. So you feel free to use this one too. Either way will work. So I'll add in our instant coffee powder. It has to be instant though. Don't think that you're going to be able to use coffee, like ground coffee in here, it won't dissolve. So that's not what you want. We always want to add a little vanilla whenever we're doing a chocolate dessert because again, it makes everything more chocolatey. It really enhances the flavor. And then I'm going to add in one egg. I'm in a habit of always cracking my eggs into a little bowl before I add them to my batter because you never know if you're going to get a bad egg. So mix this all together. And then we have two more ingredients to add. I mean, can you believe this? This is gonna turn into a chocolate cake. I know it's crazy. I almost didn't believe it myself the first time, but it's so, so delicious. So I have here some grated zucchini. I was just doing this with a hand held um, grater. You could do it with a box grater too. I don't know if you want to break out the food processor to grate a little bit of zucchini. So just wash these and dry them. You're obviously not going to peel them, but you want this to be grated pretty finely. And believe it or not, the zucchini is actually totally not detectable in this cake. You know, so if you're worried that any green specks are going to be in this cake, I promise you, you won't even notice them. Okay. That looks like that's about one and a half cups, so this is going in here. In fact, when I served this cake to my son, I didn't want to try and pull the wool over his eyes and, you know, sneak something in there. So he was eating the cake and I said, you know what, I have to come clean. There is zucchini in this cake and he loved it so much. He said to me, I don't even care. All right, I also threw in some semi-sweet chocolate chips just for fun. And you're gonna mix this all together. And then all we need to do is bake this off 
usually most ovens are going to be fine at about 45 minutes here, but it could, depends on your oven. I mean, some ovens run hot and some are a little slow. So, you know, you should know your oven. Um, if you're not sure if you have a hot or a slow oven, just start out the timer at 40 minutes and then you're going to just take a peek at your cake after that time. And if it looks like it's springing back, or if you put a toothpick in there and it comes out clean, then I think you're good to go. All right, so let's just spread this out so that we have a nice even layer of our batter. And there you have it. I'm gonna stick it in the oven, bake it for 45 minutes, and then we're good to go. We're back. Chocolate cake is out of the oven and it looks and smells so delicious. All you want to do though, if you're not sure, is just kind of press the center of the cake a bit. And if it doesn't leave an indentation, then you're ready to take your cake out. Just cool it for a bit though first before you cut into it. This one is still slightly warm, but if it's hot out of the oven, it really doesn't cut slice very nicely. So just to kind of loosen the edge from your cake pan, just run a thin knife along the sides that are touching your cake pan and then just pull up on your parchment to remove the entire cake if you'd like to serve it um, from another cake plate or something. And I'll just cut into it right now just so that you can see what the inside of it looks like. I mean, from what I can tell from the top, I don't notice any zucchini whatsoever and I don't think anybody else would either. So you can cut this into large pieces, into small pieces. I mean, I usually cut this into about 16 pieces, making them, you know, like a nice sized treat. And just take this end off right now. I mean, it is so moist and fudgy but it really does have the texture of a cake. I mean, it has like a nice sponginess to it. So you can see the, the zucchini is really like indistinguishable from the rest of the cake. I might just have to have a little bite right now. I mean, seriously, this cake is like out of bounds. It is so darn good. And it really tastes like a chocolate cake to me. I mean, I can't even tell that there's nut butter in it or zucchini or anything else. I mean, it tastes like a standard chocolate cake. Anyway, I think you're going to have a lot of fun with this one. Um, and anyway, have a good time. Enjoy.